Yo, what's good everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be covering just a few drum tips that I have that could be useful for you. Mostly specific within Bitwig, except we need to open up Superior Drummer 3 to talk about uh, how I got here. But if you're into drums or you're into neuro bass, you're into neuro funk, you're into drum design, you're into heavy bass design or weird effects, I am hopefully the channel for you. So be sure to like and subscribe because I'm trying to get to 20k before the end of the year. Also, if you want to support the channel, alchemy.com, check out the master classes, grab a lesson with me. With that out of the way, let's talk about these tricks that I have for helping you make better drums within Bitwig specifically. So the first thing that I have is let's look at setting up how to get your oscilloscope always on. Uh, this is a common question that I have when people come into the streams are like, how's your oscilloscope up? Which by the way, I'm online almost every day. So if you want to pop in and ask a question or you want to hang out with me while I make music or sounds, come into the live stream because that's the best place to ask questions. You get a live response or a conversation. Uh, so anyways, what we want to do is we want to open up an oscilloscope and uh, the settings that I have here are instead of L and R, we have mid and side. And then the, uh, I guess like value that we're using is just 11 Hertz. So that way, whenever I play this, you'll see that the transients are very clear. Uh, I have this set to free, I think, and then I have it also on wide. And then if you need to stop something, then you got to use your awesome reflexes and go. I don't know why that just did that, but it usually doesn't happen. So that's a bug. But uh, typically speaking, whenever you freeze it, that's what ends up happening. So uh, to get this on here on the uh, whole thing, whenever I open this up, what usually ends up happening is you get this kind of screen. And so in order for you to pin this and to get it like kind of stuck there, you want to uh, create this pop out window and then you can reshape this however large or small you want it to be. So I usually just do something kind of like that place it exactly where you want it and then click on the little pin thing and then when we go back to superior drummer you'll see that yeah it works pretty nicely and i always have an oscilloscope up i think that i spend most of my time designing drums more than anything else so i like to make sure that my shapes are very thick dorito looking things so the next thing that we want to talk about is how to set up multiple outs. Um, every DAW usually can do something like it, but in this particular case, I'm just going to show you what it looks like for Bitwig. There's this little output thing right here, and you're going to get something very different that says uh, add missing chains, uh, and you won't see these outputs. But once you have that, then you're going to have all the missing chains. But the problem is that unless if you set it up within your plugin or your program or whatever, then it's not going to send to your different mics. So what we need to do is go into our mixer for Superior Drummer 3 specifically. And um, I, what I do is I have all of my kicks go to a bus, all of the snare channels go to a, a snare bus, hats go to the hats bus, overheads go to the overhead bus. And then what I'm doing is with this group, I'm sending this to output one and two, three and four, five and six and seven and eight. So just for the sake of practice, let's take a look at what that might look like for something like Atlas. So what we can do is look over here on this channel and then go to sequential. So now whenever we generate a new kit, if we open this up here, you'll see that there's nothing. We go to add missing chains. And now if I were to click on a cell, you'll see that each one is on a different output. So again, like I said, everything is going to be a little bit different. I just kind of wanted to show you because it's not always going to look the same, but there's that. So now that we have this though, it's really cool because we can put individual effects on here, or we can, you know, send these to a different bus for whatever reason. If you are the type of person that likes to, I don't know, group a kick with something else, then one thing that you could try is adding a, an audio channel and saying, okay, I'm going to take superior drummer three and we are going to route this to here. And I'm going to go to just S uh, slash two L post. Now, when you talk about effects and stuff, when in pre and post, you will be need to be mindful because it's not talking about these. It's talking about whatever is on the inside. So if you have effects on here on this blue, uh, then you are going to want to do post. And then if you don't have any effects on here, then you'll just set it to pre. Or, or leave it alone, I guess, if you will. 
Um, or if you have multiple outputs, you might want to set it to pre, so that way it's not also taking whatever it is that you have here, but that's a totally different thing. But what's really cool is that now that you have this on audio channel four, we can actually send this to an effect channel. So if you've got like a distortion thing or you've got some kind of, you know, I don't know, room reverb or something of the sort, that could be helpful to kind of group everything in that way. And you can have very fine control of how you want to uh, shape your drums and stuff. So the next thing that I have is probably the most important. And that's actually what this video was supposed to be about initially. But I was like, oh, maybe I can cover a few things is, as you can see, using a replacer to make fundamentals or to add fundamentals as a layer for your kicks and snares or for anything really. So what the replacer does is I've got a video on this that's dedicated and on that video, I took drums and made a bass to it. On this video, I am taking a kick and adding a fundamental kick to this. So what you wanna do is you wanna throw a replacer on here and then set what key you wanna trigger this at. And every time this hits the kick or every time this hits above the threshold, it's going to trigger MIDI. So that's really cool. So what I have is this kick right here. And this is just a, I just did this on a whim. It's nothing special, but uh, this kick is going to trigger every time we are sending this to a, uh, or every time the kick is happening within Superior Drummer. Now, the thing is, is that right now, even though this is both in MIDI, this, the replacer is not listening to MIDI. It's listening to the actual audio that's coming out. So if you have an audio loop, then you could essentially place this on here uh, even do some kind of frequency range to try to target like only the lows so that way the kick will only be triggered you're going to get mixed results uh i yeah i would say just like split the kick up into its own different thing and then layer that as a kick that's the best way to go but your mileage may vary but anyways whenever a kick happens on here we're also going to get a fundamental And so what that basically does for us is it just fortifies that acoustic kick with a very clean sine wave and noise transient that just helps beef up everything a little bit more. And uh, this is super awesome because it gives you uh, like, it just really takes away a lot of the legwork that a lot of people have had to do in the past of supporting breaks over each other. With this, you can not only replace this with any kick that you want uh, so we could use like e-kick or you could hell even you can probably upload addictive drums or something if you wanted to although i wouldn't recommend it it seems a little bit overkill but um yeah it just takes away the issue of having to resample and then you've got two kicks on top of each other and then you've got to eq them together and then you've got to compress them together and then move it and ship it out with this you can just say okay well i've created a group here this one is the clean channel this one is the replacer channel and then now whatever processing I want to do, I can do my compression or whatever, or uh, distortion, compression and clipping and make the drums much larger than they were. So that's pretty much it. Those are some tips that I have for you. Um, if you want to talk about some other things that might be a couple of little extra goodies, one thing that I would say to like humanize drums and stuff is experiment with this little feature over here on the left. This will be like the bonus trick, I guess. But what you can do with these is actually randomize all of these different uh, parameters, if you will. So if I wanted to shuffle the hats up or something of the sort, then I can grab the velocity here and set a general scale of say 75% and turn the chaos up. And now I've got humanized velocities on hats. And then if it's not enough or like it's too dramatic, then I can always back off or I can adjust them all together to turn them up a little bit more. Now, the other thing that you can do uh, just for funsies is you can add chance to it. So if I wanted to, I can set the means to, I don't know, it's at 89%. And now what this means is by adjusting this, every time this plays, it's going to potentially play a hat or it might not. So. Sometimes this can help you come up with some interesting like kind of fills and spaces if you've got some kind of call and response, especially with drum and bass or whatever, but it's not always entirely necessary. So just for the sake of being thorough, the other thing that's important about this is with these chances and whatnot, 
you can set them up to uh, have a little bit of finite control, if you will. So if I were to click on one of these notes that are highlighted, for some reason that's not popping up. There we go. Uh, I can actually set all of these. I gotta pull that back up on the clip. But I can actually set all these to a seed or keep it at random. And so when you click on a seed, it's going to say, okay, we randomized it, but now it's going to be the exact same every time. Or you can click on a new one and then it's going to be like, all right, now it's going to be the same every time. And if you want to kind of bounce multiple takes of this, then what you can do is uh, set this back to random, pull this into the clip launcher, right click this and go expand. And then we'll just say two. And now hopefully this will be a little bit different, which it is. So uh, you can do that as many times as you want to, which I think is super neat, but this gives you a little bit of variation behind whatever it is that you have set up via operators and uh, chance and randomization and all that stuff. So hopefully that was helpful to you all. Uh, again, I would love it if you guys could help my channel with some interaction. I'm just trying to grow and trying to upload uh, helpful content for you all. And so if you have any questions, then you know let me know. If there's something that you are wanting to see from me that I haven't done before, then let me know. If you've got some like weird out there request that's like, how do I make some crazy type of side trance or something? I, I might try it, but like I'm trying to like I'm trying to teach what I'm good at and what I know, not stuff that I think I know, if that makes sense. So I'm uh, just trying to keep it real with you all. But anyways, thank you so much for everything. Really appreciate it. Check out alchemy.com or book a lesson with me and I will see you all in the next one.